you know, with all the most savage people in the world, <laughs> attend benefits. Uh, <laughs> This lasts about 33 minutes, okay? And then after that, you know, this, this, this is over. And then, and then, uh, I sent out an email thing to um, a few people, but not, not to everyone that had an image of Bill riding a storm wave and it said it says storm surfer and then it says uh, why I would rather surf than cover the art scene but I'll continue to do both even though they suck <laughs> something like that you know so um, can you see why surfing sucks kind of <laughs> okay, well that takes care of that, right? <laughs> Good, because it's torture, right? And the, uh, and the art thing, uh, well, you know, it sucks if you're an artist a lot of times, and it sucks if you're in the media also, occasionally, and if you're a gallery owner, uh, and uh, a viewer, a fan, the museum worker, a mover, you know. <laughs> I've done all of those things. And I can, you know, but I've done all those things and I've done, I've done it for a long time. It's like I have done, you know, uh, like I've moved art and I've uh, put it up on the walls, I've prepared it, I've registered it, I've framed it, I've matted it, I've worked in museums, I've worked in galleries, and I've done all this different stuff, you know, and I was an artist, and I, I you know, but I quit being an artist because I started doing this gallery beat thing, and that seemed to be, you know, more uh, pleasing to me. <laughs> well, it was pleasing to me because once I started doing Gallery Beat, and most of you are sort of familiar with it anyway, because I know everyone here, and a lot of you I just know strictly through doing Gallery Beat anyway. But um, that's what got me on the media side of covering the art scene. And so Walter and Kathy and I, for 10 years, well, we started doing this stuff almost 10 years ago. and. Uh, um, <clears throat> it was a rough little hobby to have, doing Gallery Beat and, and having it on cable and, you know, broadcasting every week. And it was, it was a lot of fun. It was great. It got me out of being an artist, which I really, really detested. Uh, <laughs> and felt like, what a curse. I can't believe people want to be an artist, you know? And I was an artist for 20 years and there's, really good artists here and, and the only reason they're still artists and they're like in their 30s and 40s is because they're good enough and strong enough and crazy enough to continue doing it even though it's a very you know ego blasting business to say the least and um, uh, you'll probably notice that the best known artist that I know is my girlfriend and she is not here uh, because I didn't want to put her on the spot and I also didn't want you guys to feel like to feel her being here because she's a famous artist and being a famous artist is what artists want to be <laughs> because it really helps to be famous because you get all of the stuff, right? You know, you get a better seat in a restaurant, uh, you could buy a house, you know, or a loft or whatever, because you, maybe you'll make some money. There's a good chance if you're a famous artist, you're probably making some money, you know? Like Spencer <laughs> is an incredibly famous artist. And he is beginning to make some money, right? He, he has to, because he's got to pay rent here.
But um, eventually, yeah. Anyway, the, I guess where I'm going with this and why you know the the deal was is that I've been in this business for a long time and. I feel very tortured by it. And, you know, I just turned 50 years old. And some people, you know, might think that my attitude is like, well, my life is almost over. Or, <laughs> you know, and, and that's why I have to do this now, you know, because, you know, hell, I'm 50. Well, how long do I have left, you know? <laughs> you know or it might be, oh, well. The glass is only three quarters full, <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. But, um, you know, I've gotten into this weird zone. It's like I, I couldn't uh, quite do the cable access TV thing anymore. It just sort of slipped away. And, uh, and I, what I noticed was a lot of things sort of slipped away. And there was a certain amount of simultaneity with that. Uh, evaluation because um, I was documenting ar artists at the time that I started to not do the weekly show. I, I was focusing on artists, doing profiles of artists, getting in the studio and really like trying to get the artists in action and while they're working on paintings or sculpture or whatever they do, get it ready for a show and then I would show the show and I would try to like hopefully the artist would start to freak out and fall apart, you know, before, before the exhibition and stuff like that. But I had actually chosen artists who were so seasoned, so professional, and, and such hardcore veterans that they hardly ever uh, <laughs> showed any tension, you know, before they had a show because they, they had everything done. And I got lucky. I, had, I, I covered Cecily Brown, and she was a young artist who had a lot of attention. It was her first show at Larry Gagosian, and she... She did definitely show tension. <laughs> and a lot of stuff, you know, happened to her, you know, while we were shooting. And then, you know, like her boyfriend freaks out like two or three weeks after her opening. She gets really bad reviews from the top critics. And then I, I keep shooting after that. Because for some reason, Cecily is very attracted to the attention and the camera. And when you're attracted to the attention, I mean, it goes both ways. Because you think you're doing something really cool and sort of expressing yourself, but you don't really know what's actually happening a lot of times. And so I, I've, I'm totally indebted to her because she actually showed us and me what a real trial is. And she had a show at Larry Gagosian's gallery, which is you know, one of the biggest and most crooked galleries there are in New York City. <laughs> uh, 